and that God is speaking in this situation. And he says, strengthen yourself. See what you're going to do. For in the spring, in the spring of the year, the king of Israel, king of Syria rather, will come up against you at the return of the year. You see, armies, uh, years ago, armies did not fight year round. The reason why they didn't fight year round because they were not able to fight in all kinds of weather. So the prediction here is that when it is warring season, you know, every season in your life ain't warring season. Y'all need to quit giving all this credit to the devil. Are you walking with me? Every, every season in your life ain't warring, ain't fighting season. There are some seat, you know, there's winter, spring, summer, and fall. Y'all know what they are. When are you going to go to church? Some of you are always complaining about something. Falling into things you don't need to. I wish I had somebody, but you need to spring into action. Every season is not a season of hardship and contentment. Every season is not warring season, but he says when warring season comes, he says that's when the enemy is going to come up against you. Are y'all praying with me? I'm almost finished. I done cut it down to two hours and 45 minutes. Are y'all praying with me here? My brothers, we need to understand though that he is still God even in the middle, even in the midst, even in the, in, in the concept of the valley. But watch what happens. He says, make sure, make sure you strengthen yourself. Make sure you take note. Make sure you know what you're going to do when he comes. Because he is coming. Are y'all praying with me? But watch this. Watch this. Watch this. He's still God even in the valleys. Watch this. But the enemy, the enemy has said to themselves, you know, I look at God and I said, I said, God, he's bad. Because God doesn't just give us what the Israelites said to prepare themselves. But God in his prescribed word tells us what the enemy is talking about. Let me say that again for the hearing in pad. I said God just doesn't tell godly folks what we need to know. But God tells us what the enemy is talking about y'all y'all know how it is if i was a fly on the wall guess what you don't need a fly on the wall when you got god god says it in his word he said this is what the enemy has said the enemy has gone to that king and they said they said look here king Better dad, he says, watch this, watch this, watch this. He's still God even in the valley, but your enemy, number one, will make a wrong assumption about who your God really is. This is what the enemy said. If you look at the text, I hope you in, I still hope you, I still hope you got your Bibles open. We in Bible country. Notice what the enemy said in verse number 23. Then the servants of the king of Syria said to him, their gods. They say God's in the plural. It's only one God. I wish I had somebody. You see, that's the reason why you must stay confident when the enemy comes up against you because you understand they are not a plethora of God. It's only one God. They think that there are many gods for they say this is to them. Their God would poly, poly mean many, polytheistic, but we only serve one God. Tell your neighbor, we only need one. <laughs> we don't need a whole bunch of gods. Their gods, they say, they, they made a bad or wrong assumption. They had a bad deduction. They said their gods are gods of the hills. You see, these servants have some bad doctrine. Their counsel is based on the character of idols not on the character of Yahweh. Their deduction was bad, for they said, therefore they, were, they are stronger than we, but if we get them to the plain, then we can be stronger than them. Their deduction was that of a place instead of God's power. That's what the enemy does. 
The enemy wants you to think that because of the place that you're in that God cannot prevail in your life. I need about 10 witnesses that say I might not be where I want to be, but I'm right where God wants me. Don't you ever let the enemy tell you about the place that you're in. They might not know what your God has already done. That your God has gotten you out of some situations before in your life. That your God has already specialized in that which seemed impossible. What's impossible with man ain't impossible with God. I need to know how many of you really know who God really is. That's a word for the church. Somebody here needs to know that it doesn't matter where you are in life. It doesn't matter your condition. It doesn't matter your climate. It doesn't matter your controls. It doesn't matter your criticism. It doesn't matter your crowds. It doesn't even matter about your complaints. God still has power to do what no other power can do. Are y'all praying with me? They said, if we can just get them down to the plains, then we will be stronger than them. Their deduction was, and that's why the enemy fights you so hard to try to get your mind focused on a place instead of focusing on God's power. Go ahead and slap your neighbor and say, stop worrying about the state of affairs in which you are in. And start thinking about and praising God for his power. It doesn't matter how crazy Donald Trump, I wish I almost cussed right there. It doesn't matter how crazy Donald Trump is. God is still in control. Are y'all praying with me? But watch what the enemy does. Somebody said, check your enemy, baby. Check your enemy. Watch what the enemy does. God is telling us all this. God is giving us some secret service announcements. He says, king, this is what the king of Syria says. So do this. Dismiss the kings. Each from his position and put captains in their places. Y'all praying with me? And then, then watch this. He says, and you shall muster an army like the army that you have lost, horse for horse, chariot for chariot. Then we will fight against them in the plain. Surely we will be stronger than they. And he listened to their voice. What were they trying to do, Pastor Gardner? Can I tell you? I'm glad y'all asked that question. They wanted a better military coup. They wanted, they thought that if they could just muscle up, if they can get better men in position, that they thought they can beat the people of God. And that's what the enemy tries to do. Is the enemy tries to substitute muscle power. But they don't understand that the master is still in control. That's what the enemy tries to do. Is they try to rearrange some stuff. To make it look different. To think in their own mind. That they are stronger than you. But you need to slap five with somebody. And tell them my God is stronger. Than anything that comes up against me. No weapon formed against me. Shall prosper. If you know, if you know that scripture. You should have took off running. To Jess Oxtails. And got your oxtail plate. I wish I had somebody. Not only, were, not only did they try to change around the people, but they were trying to get them to a place. They began to start counting folks. They began, they, they, you know, so it says, so it was in the spring year that Benadad mustered the Syrians and went up to Aphek to fight against Israel. Are y'all praying with me here? They, they, they had a bad deduction. They had a bad they had a bad, bad, oh, bad, bad assumption about who God really was. But if we're going to understand that he is still God, even in the valley, we have to understand that God will give you a dynamic announcement. Are y'all praying with me here? I'm almost finished. But watch this. God, then the man of God. I like that right there. Because every time God needs a message to be preached to his people, he'll send a man. Are y'all praying with me here? Somebody in here ought to thank God for your pastor. You ought to thank God for your preacher. You ought to thank God that God has divinely ordained him to speak on his behalf. 
Watch this dynamic announcement. Then the man of God. No, notice it says, then the man of God. It wasn't just anybody. Some of you need to quit all of this street Negro theology. Just because they read the Bible a lot don't mean they understand what's really going on in the scripture. I wish I had somebody. Just because they have all these private Bible studies doesn't mean that they understand who God really is. I need y'all to understand this on today that not only Christian folks read the Bible. You got some Muslims that read the Bible. You got some atheists that read the Bible. And they try to translate it any kind of way they can. That's why you ought to take in the scripture what scripture says. How can he preach unless he be sent? Then the man of God. Man of God. Watch this dynamic announcement. Then the man of God came. Somebody said, oh, he came. And spoke to the king of Israel. And watch what he tells. I'm in, I'm in verse number 28. I'm, I'm, I'm trickling on down here. Y'all better get with me. Oh, I won't be long. The Lord, he says, the man of God came and encouraged him and said, the Lord, thus says the Lord, because of what they said. Because of what they said. You know, every now and again, you ought to thank your haters because of what they said. <laughs> every now and again, when they talked about you, you ought to say thank you for calling me your old black ugly dog. <laughs> every now and again, because they said, don't you understand? Because God knows who you are. He'll take what they said and make them eat their words. That's why when you get home, you ought to send an email or a text to your enemy and tell them thank you. Thank because when you said I couldn't, God let me know I could. When you said I wasn't going to be, look at me now. When you said I wasn't going to make it, look at me now. Is there anybody in here? <laughs> you got enough gospel sense to understand that you wouldn't be who you are if it wasn't for the Lord who was on your side. Now go ahead and tell your neighbor, thank you for talking about me. Thank you for giving up on me because just because they said. God spoke. Are y'all praying with me here? The Syrians said, thus says the Lord, because the Syrians have said, the Lord is God of the hills, but he is not God of the valley. Therefore, God said, because they said they don't know who I really is. God says, I will deliver all this great multitude in their hand. And when it's all done, they will know that I am the Lord. Y'all ain't praying with me. I just wanted to remind you that God is bigger than your valley. I know that it is easier to serve the Lord when we are on the mountaintop. It is easier when we are excited about the Lord and about his work. However, when we go into one of the valley experiences of life, he is still God. When we enter the physical valleys and the physical pains,